the most important thing we can do now here at this time on earth is run for office or be part of a team that's running for office. Were I you, I would consider strongly running for local office, given that I am. I live in this country. That's what I'm doing. But I, I don't personally want to be a politician. And if you don't want to be a politician, good news. There's other things you can do regarding that. You can be part of a team. If you ever, if you ever see a, uh, if you ever see like a, uh, uh, a box car racing league, there's some, but there's people that make the car, and there's people that drive it. You don't have to be the driver; you can just make the thing. That's what we're looking at here. This is also, though, how you can become the person in the seat. This is a guide on how to run for office. Now this was made for 2022, but it's still perfectly relevant. Uh, it, it, wa it walks through rather um, beautifully just about everything you need. Uh, it's the, it's, here's the timeline. There's the time where you consider, and then you do, uh, an exploratory committee, and then you make the announcement, and that's all preparation. Interesting. Good to have it divided like that. Then there's the actual campaign and election day. That's the execution. You've noticed, they say, that we've broken the timeline into two distinct phases, preparation and execution. We can't stress enough how important the preparation phase is for a campaign. You will save yourself a lot of time and money if you invest in this phase before announcing your candidacy. Almost half of the steps we'll discuss occur before the execution phase. Considering a run for office, the very first question you need to answer is, am I ready to run? Running for political office is a major commitment, and you'll want to think it through first. The, the first step is to understand the office. What is the name of the office you're running for? What are the specific traits and qualifications that this office holder must have in order to do a good job? Why are you qualified? Write down at least three specific reasons why you are. Now, here's where I will jump in and say this. If you're looking to run for office, and you look at an office, a apolitical office that is opening up, near you, and you simply aren't qualified for it. In your own estimation, you try to write down three things that make you qualified for it, three specific reasons why you would be good at the job. And you can't do it. You're just, you're like, I don't have any of the experiences that I think you ought to have if you run for this. I don't have confidence in my own candidacy. I don't know how I can ask people to have confidence in me. Then look for a different office doesn't mean don't run at all. It just means, okay, fine. L look for a smaller office. Look for a, an equally big but uh, you know, focuses on something else office. The U.S. government is designed to be run by the people that live there. It's designed for average folks to start with small government jobs if they're interested in politics and, and work their way up. Do consider that. The second step is to evaluate your core network. Have you discussed a potential campaign with your spouse or your partner? Uh, how about your closest friends? These will be your earliest supporters, so it's important to know if they're on board. What about your career? Will the campaign conflict with your employment or in any way conflict with other responsibilities? Fun fact, some of you folks have retired recently. You got the time. You got the passion. You got a whole career worth of experiences to draw from. I don't know. I might consider it. The second step, but if you're enjoying yourself, you've also earned that. The second step is to evaluate. Yeah, sure. Next, you'll want to understand the time commitment required for the office. Now, this is interesting. Will it require a leave of absence from your job? Will it be manageable with your current work-life balance? Or will that require some adjustments? So it goes on and on and on. For, I mean, good to know, but... Uh, if you want the packet for it, well, look, they've got, uh, they've got a link right there you can use. 
walks you through all that. But let me just say, there's plenty of positions, like city council positions, where they really only need you for a, a couple of hours a month. It's really more of a hobby. And they don't pay you like it's a massive job. They pay you a stipend, a, a little thing. Here's, here's 1200 bucks for the hours you put in over the course of the last year. Thank you for your service. And by the way, the real reward is you got to choose how your city is run. Um, there are plenty of jobs that you don't, a uh, political office that you don't have to give up your career for. But let me jump down. This is all, I just want to sh give you a sense of what this guide is. Again, the guide is linked in the description. It's the very last link in the show description. Go have a look at that. Uh, but I want, oopsie daisy, I want to show you one other part. Because this is all focused on, so far, the candidate. Look at these, though. What are the roles in a political campaign? Candidate, campaign manager, fundraising director, communications director, networking director, events director. Depending on the size and scope of your campaign, you might fill several or all of these roles on a daily basis. If you're running for city council, probably yes, you will fill all of those roles every day. That's fine. That's, that's perfectly normal. But what about, what about mayor of the city? What about, uh, what about uh, county commissioner? Things like that. You might, you might want there to be a different mayor or a different county commissioner or a different whatever, but you don't want to be it. You did those earlier steps and you thought, I got a lot of passion. I can get a lot of good things done. It ain't me, though. It ain't me in that seat. Well, go to the person in your group that you think should have that seat. Or go to a, a person that you've heard of who you think has good character and be the kingmaker and say, listen here, I want you to be mayor. I'm offering to be your campaign manager. I'm offering to, to be your fundraising director. I have this guide right here. It's a game plan for running for office. We can follow it if you want and make you the mayor. Learn how to get good at these things. So how do you, like, the, these other jobs, which are all necessary for getting people elected, learn how to get good at those. And, uh, it, by the way, it's not terribly uh, hidden how you can get good at those things. You just talk to other people that have done it. You can call up your local Democratic or even GOP <laughs> parties and say, can I talk to somebody who's a good campaign manager? I want to learn the ropes. Depending on the size and scope of your campaign, sure. How, uh, so how do you build out a support network uh, to help contribute to all of these campaign roles? Here are a few suggestions. Now, think of this both for as you want to be a candidate and as you want to introduce yourself to candidates or, or introduce your friends and family to the idea of being a candidate. You could play this from either end. Friends and family are always a great place to start. Put together a steering committee of friends, family, and supporters who can provide advice and network on your behalf. A finance committee is also a great asset. Obviously, having someone who has experience with raising and or managing money involves uh, managing money involved or running this committee is a bonus. Uh, building a rapid response team is extremely useful in our 24-7 social media environment. If you have a small team of folks who know your campaign messaging, they can tag team responses to news story comments, social media trolls, etc., etc. Wicked Foxy Dragon, if I'm ever dumb enough to run for office, I'm going to beg you to be on the rapid response team because you are, you are uh, the best at it that I know. Uh, the most important advice we can give you is never to turn away a volunteer. Find out what their strengths are and use them but don't try to fit a square peg into a round hole. For example, if you know someone who is an introvert but wants to help, they probably won't feel comfortable knocking on doors or making phone calls. Instead, 
find out if there are other tasks he or she can do that are better aligned with their skills and personality. And folks, that is really what I want to highlight for you. If you are that person, if you if you find yourself uh, uh, behaving in public with Ron DeSantis mannerisms, and you have that, you're as uncharming as Ron DeSantis. Uh, but you're you know you're not a villain. You just you don't have you don't feel that you've got the stuff. That's fine. First of all, I would say that at the end of the day, if if you truly, truly know um, politics through and through, it wouldn't matter. But if you, it, the point is, if you think, if that's what you think of yourself, you can still take one of these other jobs. You don't have to be uh, the round peg. You can be the square peg and get involved with a campaign. And by the way, maybe in the course of doing that, you'll discover, oh, I do have what it takes. Oh, I've met candidates. They are flawed humans. Certainly, I am not more flawed than the candidates. That, that's equally likely. But get familiar. Get comfortable in these waters. It goes on. Talking about budgeting. Let's just look at some real quick uh, uh, stuff to budget for. Operations, salaries, uh, if you are actually... Uh, uh, Paying people. All right, fine. Let's let's go back up. How much do you need to budget for office? Okay, so what should you? All right. If this is your first run, you might have first time expenses you wouldn't necessarily need in subsequent uh, elections, like your website or yard signs, etc. Let me just jump in here. At the local level, most candidates that I've met spent next to nothing. Like, they literally just set up a website. Sometimes they just set up a Facebook page. It was as simple as that. I would argue you should set up a website if you don't know how to do that. You can pay somebody, like, 500 bucks to get it done. Um, or, hell, you probably have somebody in your family that can get it done for damn close to free. The point is, you don't... This They're talking about for major office with this stuff. We're going to look through it real quick, but you should just know that context. Okay. So if you're running for a big office, people are going to need salaries. Uh, or you're going to have to pay money for voter files and databases. The reason you do this is so that you don't waste your time uh, campaigning in a bright red area if you're a bright blue candidate. Um, website, gas, office space, included internet, rent, heating, etc. Uh, fees like bank and payment processing and office supplies. Uh, then you've got to consider in your campaign budget, voter contact. Direct mail, radio ads, radio production, digital advertising, live and automated calls, uh, palm cards, business cards, yard signs. Okay, let me tell you, the ones that I would recommend you spend your money on are uh, radio ads, digital advertising, and not newspapers as much, but local TV spots. Interesting, I don't see them here. Maybe, uh, yeah, I don't see local TV spots, I would recommend you do that. Cost you a couple of hundred bucks. Uh, if, if you're talking genuinely local television, if you're if you're at the level where somebody's on sale, uh, not even then, if you're running for, if you're running for county anything, county level anything, uh, I, would, I would try to get an ad out there. Uh, fundraising also costs money, ironically. Fundraising events, printing, postage, letterhead, envelopes, and donation cards. You can download a campaign budget template by clicking on the image below. All right. So on and on it goes. This is a great guide. Uh, I would highly, highly recommend if you have any interest in running for office, or more importantly, if your interest is just, if you have any interest at all in affecting your local politics and becoming a political player in your area in whatever form that takes read through this it's a great guide for doing exactly that and send this to whoever you think should have a look i have met people who in in that little slice of the world were kingmakers 
Some of them held office themselves. Some of them were just well-known people behind the scenes. You would be surprised how easy it is to become a powerful and influential person by just trying. Just taking an interest and putting in some honest effort. If you're watching this program right now, you're getting the kind of education necessary to, to make you speak with authority on these things. At the very least, to get a general sense of how all this stuff works. It's going to give you a massive leg up, no matter what way you want to approach this from. I would, I would strongly encourage you to use that and to be one of the people who shapes your community starting in 2024. You're sick of people like Lauren Boebert, who throws, who throws a picture of a dead girl in the trash. You're sick of people like that occupying the, uh, the seats of power in the U.S. Get rid of them. Toss them out the way that we were always supposed to, which is by beating them at the ballot box. You can do it. Your old pal Jake believes in you.